The Towson University football team back in action this week after a bye. The Tiger Football Report starts now, brought to you by the Green Turtle. Welcome, fans, to another edition of the Tiger Football Report. I'm your host, Cyril Marigas, along with the 2011 Eddie Robinson Coach of the Year winner and this week appearing on HBO's 24-7 College Football, head coach Rob Ambrose. How does it feel to be a national star now? Next question. By the way, folks, if you haven't seen it on HBO, they followed the Florida football team last week as they got ready to play the Tigers and Coach Ambrose, front and center at the end of the program. You need to tune in to watch that. Anyway, I will speak briefly about Florida, but uh, the one thing is, four-year players, it did not go the way they wanted, but it was an experience that they can take with them for the rest of their lives playing in front of 80,000 people in the swamp. Yeah, I suppose so. I, I as a, as a player, you're probably going to look back at that when you're a lot older and talk about the experience. But as a player who still has eligibility left, that experience is the ultimate measuring stick for them. Here you're talking about a team that's number what, eight in the country, period. Outside of the NFL, this is as good as it gets. And how you stood up to your opponent, how your offense, defense, or special teams stood up to those units um, throughout four quarters versus who they play for the rest of the year. Uh, I'll be honest, after watching the – over game, I kind of feel pretty good about us. And, and that's good for me, too. That's a measuring stick for us as well. So it was a, it was a good experience. You, you don't go anywhere to lose, but the percentages are clearly against you. You know, we have did a lot of good things down there, uh, did a lot of good things and did exactly the right thing you could do and still could get it done based on who we were doing it against on occasion. That's brutal. But uh, I would like to have all the bullets in the gun before that. The, the, the best thing, though, for me was as we were getting on the buses and on the planes, I didn't see anybody on crutches, which, which is what you worry about when you play a game like that. It's also another measure. You know, if you play a game like that and you walk away with a lot of injuries, it doesn't necessarily say a ton about the team you played. It says a lot about your team, about where they're not strength and skill-wise. And the ability to match up was too far away. And for us, that didn't happen. We walked out with a bruise or two, and we're ready to go for us, the next opponent. All right, you have a bye. Um, and, and this year probably comes at a perfect time for you because you have been banged up over the course of the season and it gives the guys a, a break. What do you do differently during the bye week as opposed to a regular <clears throat> week when you have a game? Uh, well, one, we don't practice as much. We, we take one, at least one day off of that. Uh, two, how we practice is entirely different. We do enough that we can keep ourselves in body sync for the regular standard week of what we do because you know, if anybody ever works out a lot and you walk away for two or three days, your body reacts violently. It starts to shut itself down differently. So we have to keep ourselves in sync. And we have to evaluate some younger guys. We gave them the opportunity to do a lot of good stuff and see, I, I got a chance to evaluate some coaches. I let them do stuff that they don't normally do, call plays, organize stuff. And uh, everybody got a chance to get a little bit better. So now the bye week is over. You're back to your normal routine. You've got a big game coming up against Albany on Saturday. And uh, the Great Danes are a team that, that they'll come in three and three. They've lost all their road games. They've won all their home games. But this is an explosive offensive team led by a redshirt freshman quarterback. I mean, this guy's numbers, 18 touchdowns, six interceptions. Pretty good numbers, right? Somebody you'll be talking about for the next couple years. No, they, they're hot and cold. When they're hot, they're really hot and massively explosive. And they got two wideouts that are playmakers and a quarterback can put the ball, to eight, he's throwing dimes. Um, and defensively, they're doing enough to keep themselves within striking distance of a lot of good football teams. So we're going to have our hands full, no doubt. 
And their top two running backs are, are averaging over five yards. One's averaging nine, the other's averaging over five per carry. The ability to throw the ball to set up the run. Both those players are pretty dynamic guys in space. So we're going to have to tackle extremely well. As you look now, three and two, one and one in the CAA heading into Saturday's football game. Um, nothing but uh, CAA play except for you step out again after this week to take on Bucknell in two weeks. Um, how do you evaluate what has happened through the first five games, where you are, where you should be, where you could have been? Where, what kind of a grade do you give everyone at this point in the season? Hmm. For where, I mean, you know, you win them all and you're completely healthy and everybody's doing it right, then you're getting an A-plus and that hasn't happened. We're 3-2. and two. We're 3-2 and two with two losses to top ten teams in both divisions that are exceptional football teams. One was an overtime win and one was on the road in one of the toughest places to play in the country. Uh, I'd say we're probably in the B land right now. Uh, you know, everything that we say we want to be is within striking distance. Um, we just need to keep doing what we're doing, stack days and creep, keep our habits. But the bigger issue is being able to do that and stay healthy. At, uh, at losing five starters in the first four weeks is different. And of course, the, the starter that everyone focuses on is Shane Simpson, who was not only your star running back, but also maybe the best kickoff returner in the country. Um, going forward, we've seen a lot of Yee in, in short yardage situations. We're seeing a lot of Feliz Platt. We haven't seen much of Kobe Young. Um, are we going to see more of him? Are we going to see this three-headed monster as the season goes on? No. Kobe Young has chosen to redshirt for the season. Okay. So as such, we're going to go with two tailbacks, and we're going to have to fill in with some more guys to try to gain some, some of the points back that we lose from Shane and Kobe. So for the head coach of the Tigers, Rob Ambrose, I'm your host, Spiro Marikas. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Tiger Football Report brought to you by the Green Turtle. And if you can't make it out to Johnny United Stadium on Saturday when the Tigers take on the Great Danes, Gordy Combs and I will have a call for you on CBS Sports Radio 1300 starting at 345 and also TowsonTigers.com. The game also being broadcast on Flow Sports. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week with another edition of the Tiger Football Report. And as always, go Tigers.